Hello there. Welcome back to the Chaps Guide. My name is Ash and I am your host on this journey through men's style, self-development and personal grooming. Now today I'm going to answer a question from a viewer, a patron in fact, about volunteering because it is something which can be of enormous value to a person but it can also drag you down if you overextend yourself. Now the question comes from Bruno. Now Bruno's question is a good one and it is. I have a question about volunteering and social engagement. I understand there is much to win from volunteering, but how do you decide if another opportunity to volunteer is too much for you, your family, or the social system in which you live in? I ask because my family is in such a situation at the moment. It's a good question, Bruno, because I actually am one of the people who advocate quite strongly for volunteering. It can be very useful to you. It can be very beneficial. It can be great for all sorts of reasons. However, overextending yourself in any area can be dangerous. Right? It can sink the ship sometimes if it's overloaded. So let us explore, first of all, why volunteering is important. And then perhaps it'll help us to come to a determination when we come to that point, perhaps we've got all we can from it and overextending ourselves is going to be that step too far. Even though with the best intentions we want to do more, sometimes we have to rein it in. So from a positivity point of view, I've been there, right? I've been volunteering for 20 years with a number of charities and I'll explore some of these as we go along. But first of all, you get personal growth is probably the biggest thing. You know, volunteering for an organization will take your development to a whole new level. It'll take you outside your comfort zone and it'll expose you to things that you can't get in your current job. Because whatever you're doing, you're kind of set by the parameters of your employment. This is what you do. These, this is your role. Maybe you want to expand into different areas to learn new things, even if it's just for personal development. Let's, let's put aside the altruistic reasons for volunteering for a start. Let us just explore self-development. You know, when you volunteer, it allows you to take on new challenges, to dip your toe into new skills that you perhaps couldn't do within the boundaries of paid employment because it's too much of a risk. You need the salary to pay the bills, to look after your family. So volunteering from a developmental point of view will allow you to do new things, right? That you perhaps couldn't do before. It will boost your self-confidence and your skills undoubtedly. So developmentally, it's great. Also great sense of purpose, right? A sense of purpose. Helping other people is incredibly beneficial to us. It makes us feel fulfilled. It gives us an altruistic mindset. You look at the world differently when you, your purpose is to help others. You, you serve others before self and volunteering allows you to do that. If your job presently doesn't allow you to do that. You might be in a job where you, you're working at a desk somewhere. You may be you know, creating spreadsheets or doing something, I, I generalize, but you know what I mean. You're not out there on the front line helping people. So volunteering allows you to fulfill and reach that purpose in life that you've always wanted to do. It also creates the most amazing networking opportunities for you. You'll be introduced to a diverse group of people that you would never have met under any other circumstances. Maybe people who are volunteering for the charity, so the people who were working alongside as a volunteer, but also the beneficiaries of the charity. Maybe you've got a good position in society. I'm, you, know, you might be middle class, all right? You maybe never rub shoulders with the people who need the help of this charity. But by volunteering and helping them, you get to see the world from a different perspective from a perspective totally different to where you originally come from. You maybe have had a lucky life. You know, you've been privileged. You got brought up well. You had good parents who were this anchor point in your life. They exposed you to a good education. You had a solid upbringing. Other folks haven't been so lucky. Believe me, working in law enforcement for 23 years, I rubbed shoulders with enough of them to know that. But volunteering puts you maybe into their perspective, even in only a short, short time. But it's very valuable to broaden your look upon the world. And it will lead to new friendships. And the people you rub shoulders with in your charity, they're likely to be people from vaulted elements of society. 
Because let's be honest, and I, I'm going to be blunt here, the people who volunteer for charities are people who can afford to give their time away for free. And they tend to be people who are well off, they've got good jobs, maybe they're retired on solid pensions, and they've got the privilege to allow themselves to, to be charity workers because they've got time, money, wealth, positions that allow them to do that. And if you don't fall into that category, like I've never done so, right? I'm not in that category, but I've been a committed volunteer for two decades. I've met many mates in that category who have helped me in life. They have propelled me up a level or two. They've been beneficial on my life journey. So if nothing else, volunteering, if you are an ambitious person, a social climber, and there's nothing wrong with that. I don't say that with any denigration. It can be helpful for you. The other big reason why volunteering is simply a very sensible thing to do with your time is it improves your mental well-being, all right? Because there is nothing like having an altruistic mindset and helping other people to make you feel better about yourself. It improves your sense of self-worth. I can tell you now, as I say, I've, I've volunteered for 15 years with one military veterans charity. And I've helped hundreds if not thousands of beneficiaries have better lives over that time and you might be thinking okay that's commendable well done i'm going to burst your bubble i didn't do it for them i primarily did it for me because during certain periods of my life i've gone through a bit of darkness here and there like everybody nobody escapes the life journey without having peaks and troughs and when i've been in a trough some of the ways that I've helped myself climb out up to the next peak of my life has been volunteering because helping other people, doing something positive for society has made me feel better about myself. It has given me a sense of self-worth that my paid employment never did. And believe me, it can be so, so helpful. It can help lift you as you lift others. I've admitted to you there, that one of the reasons why I've always been a volunteer is because I wanted to help myself. And there's nothing in the world wrong with that. It's a two-way relationship volunteering. There are few people who do it purely for altruism. And of course, there's skill development. There's been skill development from day one for me. You might have met me 20 years ago when I was, what would I have been, in my mid-30s. I would have still been a quite immature, quite shy man who would have been uncomfortable addressing large groups of people, audiences. I would have, yes, I would have held a leadership position in a public job, but the truth is I wouldn't have felt good about myself. I would have felt not very confident. Volunteering has exposed me to opportunities to improve all of those things. It's made me a better person. It's given me skills that I would never have imagined. I absolutely would not be sat here now if I hadn't been a volunteer for a number of different charities. My YouTube journey actually began in creating a channel for a charity. And that spun off into me making my own channel to learn how to do YouTube basically for the charity. And whilst the charity uh, project ended, my YouTube journey has continued now five years later. So it gives you skills you would never have imagined and they wouldn't come along in the day job. Believe me, they really wouldn't. So before I answer your question, I'll just tell you a bit about my own volunteering journey. I come from a very um, blue collar, which is a, a sort of diplomatic way of saying poor background, right? Where, you know, uh, the coal mining valleys of South Wales, where I originate from, are areas today which have some of the highest levels of deprivation in the United Kingdom. Uh, and I grew up in that, living in a small little terraced house in a valley town which was fading away after the mines in that area had closed down. And it was in not the best place in the world. And it was a struggle. I don't know anybody who volunteered because they, they simply struggled to put food on the table. They didn't have free time, they could volunteer. So as I went up through life, I, I didn't know much about volunteering. It's not something that happened in my family. We just existed. We had no time to help other people as well. But as I went further along in my life, and I got to my mid-30s, I'd been lucky, I joined the military, it took me away, it exposed me to more of the world. I came back from that after 10 years, got in a fairly decent job, you know, working in law enforcement. 
where I had a, a modest salary. Nobody's rich in that job, but you know, we live okay. And I, I was still somehow back in these, these valley towns in South Wales. Uh, and then I moved to England and I got a bit more liquidity into my life. And I decided to volunteer for a military veterans charity. And it exposed me to lots of other things, all of the things I've talked about. Then I became a school governor before I even had kids. I realized that I wanted to have a family and I wanted to know more about education. So I became a volunteer governor with a local primary school in a, a city in which I was working. Deprived area, very challenging, but I, I understood more about the area by being a governor. It helped me professionally through my volunteering activities. I then became, having been at this point, a frontline charity worker, working with the beneficiaries directly, being a school governor puts you in a sort of leadership position. My next move was to be the trustee of a multi-million pound charity helping older people, Age UK in the UK. A local regional branch of Age UK, I became a, governor, uh, a trustee. I did that job for five years, uh, making decisions about the policies, the strategies and the direction of a multi-million pound charity, employing dozens of people. And that elevated my skills. Right? I was in a different strata of management than I was doing in my day job. And it really helped me develop as an individual, as a leader, as a person. After doing that, it gave me the confidence to set up my own charity. I recognized a gap in the charitable world which allowed me to bring together the skills I'd acquired through being a frontline charity worker, a leader in a charity, and you know, a trustee. And I set up my own charity from scratch, non-government organization from scratch. That charity ran for 12 years, um, raised a lot of money, helped thousands of people, helped direct national strategy over the years. I met amazing people. Um, I met the Assistant Secretary General of the United Nations when he gave my charity an award. I met the man who's now the king when he recognized me for my work with that charity. I was able to expose many of the volunteers in that charity to that, that life as well, recommending many of them for different things, one thing and another, and I hoped that they all developed and improved their lives through their experiences with that charity, which I set up from scratch. And the path which I've had through the volunteering world has been enormously beneficial for me. However, Bruno, I'm going to ask you, answer your question now. Verbose way of doing so, but it is possible to overextend yourself. I was there, all right? I was volunteering for about three charities, running my own charity, chair of trustees. I was trustee on other charities. I was volunteering on the front line with other charities. By now I had a family, young child. My wife was working full time in a, a very sort of good job as well. And I was never there. Three evenings a night, I was out working in the charity world. It was too much. I had overextended myself. I was fast approaching burnout. And luckily for me, the global pandemic came along. And I realized when I stopped doing charity work, because the charities I was involved with couldn't do anything during the pandemic, or they certainly slowed down. When I stopped doing it, I realized that my life had taken a skew all towards volunteering and not towards myself. I had become a man on a mission, blinkered for volunteering. I would even go as far as to say my career was affected because I had chosen paths which allowed me to continue the volunteering, perhaps rather than investing in my career. Now in hindsight, I've got no qualms about that. I'm glad because volunteering has made me the man that I am today. But it took me a total cessation of volunteering to realize my balance was out of kilter. My equilibrium had been totally thrown off. The pandemic allowed me to rebalance. And now I do just enough volunteering to keep myself happy, keep people benefiting from my activities, and everybody, and I've got time for my family. Everything is just so. I've hit the balance. My advice to you, Bruno, is to actually sit down with your journal, like I have here. Write down what you're doing. 
exactly how many hours that you're volunteering. And if you don't know, actually track them for a week. Use your journal, maybe two weeks, maybe a month, whatever's necessary for the type of volunteering you do. Write down fastidiously how many hours you're delivering to each one of these volunteering activities. And then at the end of that period of reflection, work out, is this too much? Have this discussion with your family. And if you're thinking about doing something new, well, think about stopping something you're already doing. Because I can tell you now, if you think you've hit saturation point, you probably have. But first of all, let's prove it. Evidence is king, as I learned throughout a long career in the past. So, track what you're doing and then critically, objectively think about it. Can I add any more hours without being detrimental to everything else I'm already doing? If the answer is no, which it probably will be if you're thinking this, either drop something or say no. Be good at what you're doing now. Don't be bad if you're taking on loads of other things and you can't afford them appropriate time. I hope that's been helpful, Bruno. If it has, give the video a like. If you'd like to see more, subscribe. You can support the channel by um, buying me a coffee or even becoming a patron. I make extra videos for my patrons, for people just like Bruno, who asked today's question. So, as we go forward, volunteer in good health and within the time that you can afford to give to volunteering. Until we meet again, take care.